Hello, everybody. If you are listening to us, it means that you are interested in uh, SEM's program in Graduate School of Management, and also you love uh, learning and speaking languages. Uh, you know, GSOM and SEMS promote multilingualism. And if you are planning to apply for SEMS and GSOM, the minimum requirements for languages is the English language C1, and as for the second language, minimum A2 level. But you know, today we are not speaking about the requirements. Today we are here to speak about languages as your life and career choices. We want to speak about languages as your love and passion. I am Elena Arlova. I am language coordinator in SEMS from GSOM. And today I am very happy, it's a great honor and great pleasure uh, for me to introduce to you our graduate, SEMS graduate, Peter Dimitrov. So when we uh, invited Peter to uh, come to us and to talk about languages, he agreed immediately. So thank you very much for that. And uh, to begin with, will you please introduce yourself? Hello, my name is Peter Dimitrov. I am a proud GSOM and SEMS graduate. Uh, during my studies, I traveled a lot. I studied in Austria, in uh, Australia, in Poland, in three diff different uh, business schools. Uh, currently, I'm uh, living and working in Russia, but right after my graduation, I worked for one year and a half in Portugal. Uh, my company found me uh, through SEMS, actually it's a SEMS partner, and uh, right now I'm working in uh, tourism. I am a, a tour guide and I provide and organize tours in Russian, English, Bulgarian and Polish. And I also have my own school for memory development. Peter, how many languages do you know? It's a very tricky question, I would say, because uh, we should first of all think what do we consider knowing a language? Um, it, does it count if I know several phrases or I should be able to have a certificate on C, C1, for, for instance? Um, I would say so. Um, I can work in uh, Russian, Bulgarian, Polish and English, obviously, but I can also have a very nice conversation with my friends in a cafe in German, maybe Portuguese. And I can also show off in French, uh, in <laughs> Spanish, uh, a little bit of Thai, maybe some random phrases in Japanese. So this is more on like a hobby level. Fantastic. What inspires you? What motivates you to learn languages? That's a very good question. Uh, usually when I hear this questions, I should probably answer something like uh, it's a lot of opportunities for my career, it's a lot of options I get for my business and so on. To be honest, it's about, I would say, power. Mm -hmm. When I have a knowledge of several languages, I am powerful. I have the power to listen, to understand, to inspire, to persuade people around me. And obviously I have a lot of choices that I can make. So that I can make. So this is first of all about power. It seems to me that what you are saying, what you're telling us about is also about freedom. That's absolutely true. So when you have a knowledge of a language, it's also about freedom when you travel, when you work with other people, when you talk to other people, you don't need an interpreter, you don't need to, uh, something to be translated for you. You can do whatever you want, whenever you want, whenever you need it. How will you explain that SAMS and GSOM is also about languages? Uh, that's interesting because uh, SAMS and GSOM are connected to languages directly, but they're not mm -hmm. about languages. Language is considered to be an instrument, an instrument that helps us to uh, get to our goals, to our, to our aims. And uh, oh, what is important to know about SEMS? If you want to enter it, you have special requirements. You need to have a specific level of your English, specific level of your second foreign language. So first of all, when you want to enter SEMS, you need to have a certain amount of knowledge about a language. Uh, second of all, when you are SEMS, you have to 
go abroad. It's not an option, it's a must, and it's a wonderful must, I would say, because you have an opportunity to work, live, travel, communicate with other people abroad. So, um, my point here is that there is one thing when you have a certificate of B1, C1, or whatsoever, Another thing is when you have the chance to practice your language, to show yourself, first of all, that you are able to communicate in a different language, that you really need this language. So this is what SENSE gives you as an opportunity to realize the power of the language. Thank you very much. Uh, I also have a very uh, important question. It's important for me, I'm sure it's important for our SEM students, for GSOM students. So, uh, the word is enough. How many languages is enough? Is enough? And uh, when we are talking about the quality of the language, the efficiency of the language, how much language is enough? So, before you actually start learning a language, especially if we are talking about a new language, you need to understand what you need it for. What is the aim of your time and money in investment in this uh, topic in, the, in a new language. Uh, what I mean is, before you start learning, you need to understand how will you use it. If you are going to use it for travel, then you should learn topics that are connected to travel. I mean, uh, money, mm, shopping, restaurants and whatsoever. If you are learning, learning a language uh, in order to get business contacts, to search for new customers abroad, um, you should learn business, in, business language. That's an absolutely different topic. Some people will disagree with me, saying like, you cannot mm, learn business language without having the basic knowledge. Uh, that's not true. I will give you an example with my German. Um, I was able to communicate with customers, I was able to search for new uh, opportunities in uh, German-speaking markets, I could discuss contracts and whatsoever in German, but I was not able to describe my hobbies, my family, maybe my day. I, I, I'm, I'm still actually not able to say how to brush my teeth in German, because I don't need it. It's not the main topic I would discuss with a potential, potential customer in German. So, First of all, you should understand what you need the language for and then you understand how much of this language you need to communicate and figure out what topics you need first of all. And I'm absolutely sure that you can tell us a lot of very interesting stories when knowing a language helped you in your uh, business, in your career, in your uh, everyday life. So, what was it? So, I actually have several examples for you. Uh, the first is uh, connected to my first official job that I got right after graduation from SEMS program. Uh, Damon Worldwide contacted me through the SEMS system, it's a, it's a SEMS partner, and they invited me for an interview. So, this was the moment when I started my career at this company. And very soon after this, uh, they actually moved me to Portugal, where I spent the rest of uh, my uh, job experience there. And another interesting point about languages, again connected to Damon, was that uh, director finance of uh, this company was suddenly Bulgarian. And since I spoke also Bulgarian, we had good connections from the, from, from the very beginning. Um, another good example is actually connected to tourism. So, I would never expect hearing that uh, Bulgarian actually is an exotic language. And uh, when uh, I realized that actually it is, I started working as a Bulgarian tour guide and uh, it turned out that there are quite a lot of English-speaking guides, German-speaking guides, Spanish-speaking guides, but there are around 10 Bulgarian-speaking guides in St. In St. Petersburg, but huge amount of tourists. So actually it turned out that Bulgarian-speaking guides are the most, uh, I would say, well-paid in this uh, in our in our touristic um, sphere. So, so many languages. I I'm just tell the truth. I'm very much impressed. Very much impressed because nowadays uh, there are different tendencies about uh, learning one global language, the English language, 
or uh, just choosing one or two more languages. As far as I understand, you know about 10 languages, even more, am I right? How do people react when they understand that you can speak 10 or even more languages? Actually, the reaction is uh, usually a surprise. They are excited about it, but when we start to communicate, they uh, suddenly raise expectations. For instance, I had a uh, situation when my uh, business partner uh, asked me to translate something that was written in uh, Finnish. And when I said, yeah, that's wonderful, but I'm not quite aware of Finnish language, uh, they were quite disappointed. So as soon as people realize that I speak many languages, they, they believe that I can speak anything. Then you should tell us how, how to learn so many languages. So, first of all, you should understand, as I already mentioned, what do you need a language for? This is about motivation in, and about your goals. If you do not clear, clearly understand how will this language help you, how will you use it in your future life, it's impossible to reach any consistent goal. Uh, our students, our same students, spend one or two semesters abroad. And of course, uh, it can uh, facilitate learning languages. What could you tell us about this uh, period of time? How our students can use this time to improve their language? First of all, everyone should understand that going to, a, for instance, French-speaking country or a Portuguese-speaking country for a semester, for a change semester, does not necessarily mean that after this semester you will be fluent in this language because you still need to invest your time, your energy, your power to learn the language. Uh, just living in the country is wonderful, but I have a very nice example of a person who lived and worked in Portugal for many years, and uh, he, could be, he was able to say only Uma cerveja, por favor, and that's it, mm -hmm. just one beer, please. Uh, why? Because he did not want to spend um, time, to invest his time in a language that he doesn't really want to use in his future life. Now, since he moved to a country where he really wants to live, we're again talking about mm -hmm. motivation, so now he understands that living, for instance, in, Nor in Norway, uh, he, want, he wants to stay there and he learns Norwegian and this is his motivation. But just living in a country doesn't mean that he will learn it naturally. So when I went to my exchange semester in uh, Warsaw School of Economics, I thought about it. And first of all, I took several group courses of Polish and also I got private courses. So I really invested my time. I uh, tried to find uh, local friends so that I could communicate with them in Polish and basically force myself to um, introduce Polish language in my life. So that's probably the points you need to think, you need to consider when uh, thinking about uh, how to use the time of your exchange semester to improve your language. When we talk to some students, uh, we always discuss a lot of uh, things that they can try, something new. And sometimes it's a serious challenge, sometimes it's uh, something that they can love and uh, practice, and then they can use it in their, as we say, career, in their life, and make their life much, much, much better. So, but sometimes we are afraid uh, to start learning a new language because it's very time consuming. So a lot of uh, new things you need to learn. And just what's your piece of advice? What's your recommendation as an expert? how to start a new language. So, after you figured out your goals, motivation and whatsoever, uh, we go to the practice. So you yeah. actually need to sit down and actually study. Um, first of all, you do not need to have a talent. I am not talented in languages. I just love it. I just love doing it. And yes, I had to spend my time learning every language I speak right now. But, of course, there are some tricks that mm -hmm. actually are not secret that I can share with you right now. How mm -hmm. to uh, improve your language in a fun, interesting manner. 
Uh, I'm talking about so-called mnemonics. This is uh, a way to memorize facts. Um, now we're talking about a language, so new words, grammar, and so, and so on, uh, using vi visual images. So in order to show you how it works, I have some mm -hmm. pictures that I've prepared. So uh, my favorite example is here. Okay. This is a duck. This is a beaver. So let us imagine that a duck in a different language sounds like a beaver. It's mm -hmm. a theoretical example. Mnemonics says, imagine a duck, imagine a beaver, and connect them to each other. What you have in, as a result? You want to say platypus. I know that you want to say <laughs> platypus. It looks like a platypus, but it actually is not a platypus. It is a beaver duck because it has a tail like a beaver and uh, a head like a duck. So, mnemonic says you need to connect two images. You probably are thinking right now, okay, I just asked you about learning new languages, not about, you know, these kind of zo zoology things. So, let me give you an example. First, I will talk about Russian speakers learning English. For example, uh, there is a wonderful word, uh, divine, that can be translated into Russian as божественный. So, let's consider the word божественный as our duck and the word divine as our beaver. So, how can you imagine something божественный? Like, you can imagine, I don't know, angels, wings, different sh uh, shining and so on. What can we do with divine? A Russian speaker has nothing to do with divine. We cannot uh, imagine the word divine. But as a Russian speaker, we can uh, consider the word divine as something that sounds like it. For instance, divan, right? Divan. divan. So now we have the duck that is something божественный and the divan. beaver is the divan. Now what we need to do? To, divine. to connect them with each other. We have mm -hmm. божественный, we have диван, and now we make a mnemonics. This, is, this image will actually help us to memorize the word divine. We have ear in English, oreja in Spanish. So oreja sounds like oreo. And our task is just to imagine a person that has oreo instead of his ears. This is mnemonics. When we use images instead of just sitting and learning by heart. But mm -hmm. if we talk about Russian speakers, it's not, first of all, oreo, it's orech, and not, right? That's what we are thinking about when we talk about uh, orejo. So when we talk in a different language, we obviously change our voice, we change the manner we speak, we express ourselves in a different way. And when you suddenly speak the native language of a person, you can actually feel him better, you can understand him better. So I would say that sense motivates uh, to improve yourself not only from business perspective, but also from personal perspective. And this is amazing. Uh, I agree with you. From my own experience, I can say that sense gives a lot of uh, just a kind of habit to be flexible because we can predict everything. We can understand just, for example, that if I study German, I will work uh, in Germany. And uh, if I study French, I will work in France because our careers, they change very fast. But what I see is uh, a fantastic habit to be very flexible and to be very adaptive. And this uh, motivation to take up a new language without any fear, just because you move to a different country because you work with different people. And it seems to me that it's one of the most fantastic things that you can uh, get when being a student of SEMS. So what I understand from uh, your stories, from what you're sharing with us, is that uh, SEMS uh, has given you a lot. What actually SEMS and GSOM uh, gave you? One of the greatest powers that SAMS gave me is uh, the ability to adapt, to adapt to current situation, 
to search for challenges, not only overcome challenges, but to search for them. I clearly know that life without challenges will not bring you to anything good. You can get stuck in your current situation, you will never improve your job, your career, if you know that a challenge is not something bad, it's something extremely good, you will search for it, you will know how to deal with it, and that's what Sam's taught me. Another thing Sam's gave me is the community. The community uh, that I can uh, contact with, uh, people all around the world that can uh, actually uh, help me to uh, deal with some unusual situations, to even travel. Literally, I can go anywhere I want and there will be always a Sam's will be happy to meet with me, to help me out in a country that I have never been to. If we are talking about languages, I have a very good example with my previous job at Daemon, uh, when I was working in Portugal, in English, with uh, customers from Finland, from Kazakhstan and from Japan, and you never know how a language will actually be useful to you. You would never consider, uh, I don't know, Portugal a country that will be directly connected to a Japanese language. And I adapted to it. I immediately after realized that I will have a long-term project with Japan, I went to courses of Japanese for Portuguese. So I had to study Japanese in Portuguese. That was also an extra challenge for me and I managed to overcome it. Uh, Peter, can you give a piece of advice to our present current SEM students, to our prospective SEM students? What's the best piece of advice from Peter? I would say just don't be afraid. This is the most important. Uh, you can overcome anything. You will be able to meet the requirements. You will be able to get your language skills to the needed level. Uh, you will make it with the internship. You just need to want it. If you want it, you will make it. Peter, thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Thank you.